is a special song for women. I received it the week before our 2016 edition of the International Women Fire Conference while flying to the U.S. with my wife Becky. It reveals the unique purpose of God for women in our world. It confirms the worth and value of the feminine gender. My wife Becky and daughters Deborah, Daniela and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. Jesus. I go forth. I'm not resisted. I can't be frustrated. I can't be neglected. Come on now. He said I was created for a purpose with potentials and destiny. You know what? I must become all that I was meant for. The battle is to resist the things that are keeping you from fulfilling your purpose on earth. Hallelujah. This is the Restored Woman platform. And I welcome you tonight. And I give God praise for his mercy and his grace for your life, for your family. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Uh, we've been handling the topic, destroying strongholds. We continued as we ended the topic, recognizing the real enemy of the woman. We began to look at the woman, how she's different from the man. We saw the woman and saw the things that, that were so unique about the woman that is not in the man. How the enemy was able to recognize the weaknesses found in the uniqueness of the woman. How he was able to recognize and penetrate it. And we saw how we should guide our life because the same enemy is still the old enemy. He's still the same tricks he uses. And if we are able to discover how and and what his tools are, how he penetrates our life, we should be able to have success in life and then fulfill our destiny on earth. We are seeing how to recognize this enemy, how to recognize his weapons, how to recognize how he gains access into our life. We've been able to recognize that this enemy that is the enemy of the woman is the real enemy of the man because if the woman is failing, the man is failing. Because we see women that are loose, women that don't know their place, our men are suffering it. Even if you don't want to see it, they are there to show you. Because we have women that have failed in their purposes, men are undergoing serious, you know, manipulations. Yes. Women just know how to they do what they do to get the men who are not guarded. But I want to thank God for men that are disciplined in spite of the things that some women are doing. And we want to make sure our women, as long as, you know, the women who are there, who are eager to walk in the path of righteousness, God is eager to restore, he's eager to give them back their dignity, their place, and then so that men can become the men they are meant to be. You know, any man that is married to a godly woman, a virtuous woman, a blessed woman, the man enjoys his life. Any man that is married to a woman who has not discovered who she is, a woman who has not found her place, that man is a miserable man because the woman will not understand her place. She will be miserable and she will make everybody 
everybody around her miserable. And there go, that, that also goes for the man. You see the man, you know, feeling, what is it that I'm supposed to really fulfill with this woman by my side? Meanwhile, she's supposed to be a blessing, supposed to be someone that will help the man to fulfill. The Bible says that God created the woman and called her a helpmate. The truth is that that is what we are. We are helpmates. We are there to help the man to become the man he's supposed to be. So we continue as we look at destroying strongholds. Strongholds are those things the enemy have done repeatedly in our life that have established. You know, the Bible says we should not give a, a foothold to the devil. We are not ignorant of his devices. Anytime you give the enemy access into your life, anytime you disobey the word of God, anytime you go contradictory to the word of God, the, you are opening your life for the devil. And once you open your life for the devil, he gains access. That access he gains will give him a measure in your life. And the more you are into it, the more he's growing in that intensity. And before you know it, it becomes a stronghold. We are looking at how to destroy strongholds that have been established in our life the last time i was here i was here with my beloved husband we looked at the practical ways to destroy strongholds one of the things he told me when he got born again was that his own on his unbelieving friends you know they were like uh, you, you're taking this thing too far some people some of us also go to church how are you going the extreme? Because he packed out some of his worldly songs, the CDs those days. He packed them all out and said, this thing is not good for me. It's not good for my spiritual life. I'm now a new creation in Christ Jesus. I can't continue to listen to this things that I used to listen to. You know what happened? By the time he was packing them together to both, so people were like, if you, if you don't want to listen to it, you can give it out. And his own decision was like, if I'm not listening to it, I can't give it out to somebody. I have to destroy it. He destroyed those things. You know, there are some of us that when we come to Christ, there are some kind of dressings you used to wear. You don't need to wear it again. I tell you, it is real. It is true. There is no way you can be mistaken for a daughter of hell. You can't be wearing clothes that are exposing your body and feel after all, God looks at the heart. The Bible says men looks on the outside. They look on the outward. And that is men. As far as we are concerned, we look on the outward. And you can discover and say, this one is this one. How can they identify you as a child of the devil when you are claiming you're a child of God? You can be known not only by your fruit, but also your dressing. This same dressing will depict who you are. And I tell you clearly, there are things that we are coming from, where we are coming from, that we really need to do what? Let go of them. If you want to destroy strongholds, you also destroy the access that gave the devil access into your life to establish that stronghold. Those access must be blocked. You block them deliberately, consciously, using the weapons we have. And we're looking at how to destroy, the practical ways to destroy, and we're looking at something today we read before. Second Corinthians, and I want to read it as I continue. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, rather, verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, say, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have been handling that for some time, looking at how to bring every thought. When your thoughts want to go astray, when your thought is pulling, how to bring them into captivity because those thoughts need to be arrested. That is the modern word of captivity, to be arrested and bring them to the obedience of Christ. When your thought is running away, remember how Jesus talked about a man thinking in his heart, thinking in his mind. As you are thinking it, the Bible says you have already committed it. How to bring that thought and bring it under obedience. These are the strongholds and you must overcome them. If not, to see yourself going back to the lifestyles. You know, some Christians have come to the point that they have existed for a long time in the lifestyle and in the pattern that they are feeling that nobody can ever come out of this. I tell you, some of us have walked out of the lifestyle of sin. Some of us have walked out of the lifestyle of perpetual, repeated pattern of the enemy. Some people are not proud of this lifestyle. So they do it in secret because they know that it is wrong. You know, 
know what? The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. The old way we live our life, the old pattern, the memories, the, the activities that we, we are indulging. We, the Bible says that we are not proud of when we, we are in sin. But then, after we have come to Christ, we do away with those things. We're looking at the practical ways of walking out of the devil, destroying the strongholds, and going all the way to fulfill our life. Because as long as these things are still a struggle, there is no way you can make advance. You see yourself repeating the pattern you have. No, you want to advance. You, some of us will make advancement, and before you know it, you are drawn back to the life of sin again. And you are wondering, will somebody ever, ever come out of this? I remember the book of Romans chapter 7. It was Apostle Paul telling us his struggles. He came to a point, he said, Who, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Who shall deliver me from this body of sin? It's a body of sin, and you need to be delivered from it, and you have to understand how to be delivered from it. Some people have already tried to console themselves in the fact that, you know, this is what's supposed to be. It is not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to walk out of the devil. Even though they are established strongholds, you can walk out of sin, you can walk out of those strongholds, you can live a beautiful life, and people can say, we know this man he used to be like this now he is like this that is a testimony praise the name of jesus now we are looking at the scripture i want us to look at this scripture ephesians chapter 6 we are reading verse 13 and then verse 14 praise the lord he said wherefore take unto you the whole armor very important note what he said he didn't say some armor the whole armor of God. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. You may be able to withstand, rather, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins guarded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. These are weapons. We are with we, ye shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. These are the weapons we begin to outline, but there is something I just want to pick as we continue. Say, we are for take unto you the whole armor of God. You are in a battle. We are destroying what the enemy has done. And as we are looking at destroying that, we need to understand you don't do that without God. The Bible describes to us how we have to be fitted. If not, we will not be able to stand. Some of us are actually fighting those things. Some of us are literally, you know, a land of a man who said that he, 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 he has tried to stop sexual immorality and he tried over and over. He will make a vow to himself, but he sees himself going back. He will be overwhelmed and he sees himself going back and back. He said, this, my organ, is my problem. And the man took a knife and said he's going to cut off his mouth. I'm telling you, because he was feeling that this is his problem. Some people have actually, you know, some people have relocated, some have blocked some people's line, you have cut, their, cut off from them, you don't want to communicate with them again, and you're like, this is the measure I have to take. Well, you are taking any measure you feel you should take by stopping to communicate, by returning whatever it is, by saying, I don't want anything. After doing all that, there is something the Bible says you should not neglect. If you really want to recover ground where the enemy have gained access into your life, the Bible says, take you the whole armor of God. You have the shield of faith, the faith that will be under attack. You tell you it doesn't matter. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, he loves you, you know, she loves you, you know, whatever. The shield of faith that will preserve your faith that this is wrong, I can't 
continue in this. Maybe you are into rob, uh, bribery, into, into, into corruption. You can say, this shield of faith is preserving my, my integrity, my value, and I'm not going to give it out. I am holding on. I'm standing my ground. I used to do this. I do it no more. That is the shield of faith. He talks about the sword of the spirit. That is the word of God. You confess the word of God. You know, when you confess the word of God, is a weapon against the enemy. When those thoughts are coming, you don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You find them, you fight it back with words. You say, I am now a child of God. I can't be equated like unbelievers. You know, you can't see your life, you know, and say, oh, this is your life. And then people are looking at your life and they're like, ah, he goes to church. He's even a committed member, but we see him do what unbelievers are doing. That's not a good testimony. You have to come to a point where you can really say for a, of a truth, this one that I have left, I'm not going back. And people should be able to testify that this one indeed is a change man. It's by our life. The Bible called it our fruits. By our fruits, you shall be known. Taking the whole armor of God. And the Bible says something. That we may be able to withstand the evil day. You know what the evil day is? The evil day is the day when that temptation comes. For you to withstand that evil day, you need to watch it. When the evil day comes and you did not prepare yourself, you see yourself going back to your vomit. You see yourself returning back again after all the fasting, all the prayers, all the declaration, even all the anointing. You see yourself going back to your vomit. And you know what? Everything that you have left will catch up with you again. You fail. All of those things will catch up with you again. And you start a life of struggle again, trying to meet up, trying to, you know, find a way to, to communicate, find a way, you know, actually this is what I'm into, this is what I'm into. But the truth is that you can't even express yourself. Why? You have fallen into something you have left. God wants you this year to walk out of every of those rubbish. Walk out of every of those things that defile. The Bible said, be you clean. Come out from among them. Be you clean that be are the vessels of the Lord. For you to, to be clean, for you to be at the vessel and to be qualified to handle the things that God is planning to give you this year. You need to stop mingling. And the devil will paint those pictures so beautifully you know the bible talks about moses the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 11 he said that he he esteemed he esteemed the riches of christ greater riches more than the the, the enticing things the world has to offer he endured I see in him that is invisible. And that is the attitude we must assume if you want to walk out of the devil and walk out of the strongholds and continue to effectively pursue what God has laid. You know what Paul told Timothy? He said, fight. Do warfare with the word of prophecy that was spoken over you. You make sure that what God has said this year, you're war with it. But there are things that can disqualify you from receiving all that God has promised you this year. There are things that can disqualify you from getting all that God has prepared for you. One of those things is sin. There is no way you are living in sin and you are claiming the promises God has given you this year. Mm -mm. You know what God is intending to do? God is intending, I'm keeping repeating it, I keep on repeating it. God is intending that this year you come to the point where you recover years that the enemy stole from you. Years, the Bible talked about years. He said the Lord will restore to you the years, the canker worms, the palmer worms, the caterpillars. He called it his great army that was sent against you. You may wonder, is it God that sent it against me? The truth is that whoever breaks the edge, the serpent will bite. There are so many bitings that the serpent has beaten destinies that God wants to recover this year. And if you really want to be among those who will rejoice in the recovery of their destiny, you have to make sure that you destroy strongholds. You have to make sure that you are not playing with the enemy, the devil, 
who is playing like a friend but he has the dagger to stab you when you least expected it you know when you don't deal with your flesh when you want to enjoy what the flesh is offering you you are bringing in the devil and you cannot eat of what the enemy is offering you and still want to eat of the good of the land it doesn't work that way all of the damages of all the years has been because there is an access of the enemy into our lives and that is why the enemy have gained access and god has already begun a work in our life and my prayer is that what god has intended to do in our life this year it shall be fulfilled and whatever struggle you have all you need to do is to say lord jesus this is my struggle these are my struggles and I want to lay it down at your feet. I don't want to find myself struggle this anymore. You know, Jesus, he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy loaded, and I will give you rest. He wants to give us rest. He wants to give us rest and bring us in so that all the struggles come to an end. All you that labor, you know, the labels and the burden we carry spiritually, and when your life is not in order spiritually, no matter you want to acquire physically, it is valueless, it's baseless, and anything can sweep it away at any time. So he said, come unto me, all you that are laboring, all you that are weary in your labors. He said, I will give you rest. There is a rest we can have, even as children of God. So many children of God who are supposed to be enjoying the benefits of the salvation we have in Jesus are busy struggling because of the bondage because of the activities that the devil has engaged their life with. But Jesus can set us free and break the hold of the devil. And that is what God is trying to do. I'm so glad that God is breaking every hold of the devil. And I'm so glad that I can look at the things I used to captive, capture me before and be under it. I say, wow. So this was what the devil used to use the days. And you struggle and you're battling and you're praying and you're fasting. And you say, wow. So this is really what the enemy has been using. You know, look at the enemy's lies and say, devil, you're a liar. You used to get me with those lies. But now I know better because I now know the word of God, I grow in the word of God, you confront the devil with the word of God and he flees, he leaves your life alone. You know, you have to come to the point where you say, Lord, I want all you have for me. I want to get all that you have for me. And Lord, I am laying aside those things that keep me from assessing what you have for me. And I'm trusting God that today as we look at these things, he's going to give you grace. The Bible says there is a day called the evil day and you need to withstand in that evil day. He said, having done all to stand, there are things you need to do for you to stand. Having done all, what are those all that you need to do? I am trusting God that that enemy that used to defeat you, he will see you standing. And when he wants to come to oppose you, you will withstand him. You will do all to stand. And the Bible says, stand therefore. Look at that verse 14. Stand therefore. Having done all to stand. Stand therefore. We are looking at those things that you need to do for you to stand. You cannot just begin. Some of us have been engaging the devil in warfare. You have been engaging the devil in battle. And as long as you are engaging the devil in battle with some things of the enemy, like the weapons of the enemy is still effective in your life, the battle will be wearisome. The battle will be troublesome. The battle will be winning you. You will be battling and sweating and fasting and going from one mountain to another mountain. And before you know it, you end up back again. Some people have actually given given up trying because they have seen themselves going back into the captivity of the enemy simply because they have not allowed the weapon of the enemy to relieve out of their life. The enemy's weapon is still effective in their life and they are trying to fight the devil. You cannot fight the devil with your own weapon. You need to come to the point where you do all that you need to do. And the Bible listed it out about truth. It said, God, your law is about with truth. Truth. You can't lie to yourself. You know, we live in a generation of falsehood that people can tell lies to themselves until the lie becomes a reality to them. They, and they know it's a lie, but they have said those lies for a long period of time that the lie began to look as if it's the truth. He said, guard your lies about the truth. The truth that sets you free, Lord, this is who I am. I live in falsehood, but I want to come out of it. He said, having the breastplate of righteousness, talk about truth, 
talk about righteousness, you can list them out for yourself. Because of time, I may not go into those details, but I just want to encourage you to be truthful to yourself. These are one of the things you have to do to stand. God cannot bless falsehood. God cannot bless sin. And if the strongholds of the enemy is still existing in your life, then you are not ready to be more than conquerors. You'll be conquered, you'll get up again, you'll fall down, you'll get up again. Meanwhile, you're supposed to stand and resist the devil and continue to fulfill your destiny. I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for anybody that is saying, Lord, I'm crying out to you. I am ready to walk out of these things, and I am ready to begin to stand. Can we pray together? Before we pray, I want to pray for somebody, first of all, who is not at peace with God. You know what I mean to be at peace with God? Everybody will say, I'm a child of God. Yes, God knows me, but you know the truth. You may be a child of God as God created you, but are you born again? To born again, to be born again is that you allow Jesus to control your life. You read the word of God, the word of God said, don't do this, and you say, Lord, I'm not going to do this because you are my Lord. When you are a child of God and you're not allowing Jesus to be your Lord, then you are living in rebellion. To be at peace with God, you need to make the Lord Jesus your Lord and say, you become my Lord and I, you give me the power to live as a child of God. And when that happens, you see yourself excelling. You see yourself overcoming what used to overcome you because the power to now live as a child of God is given to you. Can we pray together? Just say after we say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. I want to be your child. And I ask you today to come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Give me the grace to live for you in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord Jesus to help you from henceforth to give you the power to live as a child of God. And I want to pray for a child of God out there who has been having repeated failure. You rise, you fall again because the stronghold of the enemy is still existing in your life. You have to, have to understand, you can listen to the last episode that we talked about, practical ways to destroy strongholds. And I'm praying for you today. You can say after me, say, Lord Jesus, this year, 2022, I will not be a failure. Lord, I continue into the fullness of what you have for me. And I destroy every stronghold the enemy may claim over my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that the Lord will enable you to stand, to resist the devil, and to take all that belongs to you in Jesus. God bless you. Until I come your way again, I am Pastor Joy, and this is a restored woman. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.